For decades, import brand models were eating at Chevy's sales in the compact car segment. That changed four years ago when Chevrolet introduced the Cruze, a sharply styled sedan that finally matched up well with the All-Stars like the Civic and the Corolla. The 2015 Chevrolet Cruze is still in good standing, so let's go ahead and check it out. Now for 2015, the Cruze has been slightly refreshed and it receives a new 4G cellular and in-car Wi-Fi hotspot connectivity through its OnStar system. The Siri Eyes Free smartphone feature which gives iPhone owners an expanded voice command functionality. And then also this year's Cruise also gets an updated front end design as well as a minor shuffling of equipment. Now you can tell the difference from a 2015 to a 2014 by the LED daytime running lights as well as the grill. The LEDs are added for the 2015 model year. And then this one we have here, this Cruise is an LT model and it's pretty well equipped I have to say. Now as far as styling goes of the vehicle, I think it's quite handsome looking, quite restrained. It's definitely not the most stylish car in the class. If you're looking for a more stylish compact car, you might be better off with a Mazda 3. However, it's still very handsome looking and the LED daytime running lights do give it a much more premium presence. Now coming to your key fob design, I love how Chevrolet likes to put switchblade keys on everything that they have if it doesn't have a smart key. And then you do have your lock, unlock to release your trunk and then remote engine start and then your panic buttons right here too. Pretty nice. Now it is a Tuxton metallic exterior color with a light gray cloth interior. You also do have your power driver seat and manual recline too. Now stepping on into the interior here, as you can see it's very cruise familiar. And that's not really a bad thing here, it's a very stylish design, pretty high quality looking design here. And what you're hearing is that 1.4 liter four cylinder turbo. Now coming to your transmission, you have a six speed automatic here, pretty standard stuff nowadays. Manual shiftability as well. Putting the vehicle into reverse also displays your rear view camera with guidance lines. Trajectory as well. Pretty good looking rear view camera. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights and the hazards too. Automatic driver's side window. And let's go ahead and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors. Sixteen inch alloy wheels. your halogen headlights with your LED daytime running lights. Overall the new grille design definitely does look more interesting this time around and a little bit more bold and premium. Now under the hood you will find the optional powertrain which is a 1.4 liter four cylinder turbo like I said. Now your base powertrain is going to be a 1.8 liter four cylinder and it is available with a six speed manual or a six speed automatic. Now the 1.4 liter we have here produces 138 horses at 4900 RPM with 148 pound feet of torque at 1850 RPM with EPA estimates of a very fuel efficient 26 in the city and 38 on the highway. It definitely provides more torque than the base powertrain if you want better fuel efficiency and more power, definitely go with this powertrain here. Although the 1.4 liter four cylinder, although the 1.8 liter four cylinder will get the job done. Now you also do have a two liter four cylinder turbo diesel engine. If you're looking for even more fuel efficiency out of the cruise, 
Now pricing of the cruise starts at the LS trim, which starts at $17,745. The 1LT starts at $19,065. And then you have the Eco, which starts at $20,095. The 2LT starts at $23,270. LTZ, $24,270. And then finally, the Diesel, which starts at $25,660. Now competitors of the cruise are the cars in the compact class. You have its American competitors, the Dodge Dart, as well as the Ford Focus. Its Japanese competitors, the Nissan Sentra, Toyota Corolla, and the ever popular Honda Civic. And then you have its German competitor, the Volkswagen Jetta, and two more Japanese competitors, the Subaru Impreza, as well as the Mazda 3. Now this class is very competitive. Now this class is very competitive, and the Cruze is certainly a solid pick in the compact class. Now total vehicle price for this particular one is $22,290. Like I said, EPA estimates are a healthy 26 in the city and 38 on the highway. Now you also do have its Korean competitors, the Hyundai Elantra as well as the Kia Forte. Coming to the rear, I wish they did restyle the tail lights a little bit for this refresh, but not a huge gripe there. Rear window defroster, of course. Power windows, power mirrors, power door locks. And I love how finally they located the power door lock switches up on the doors instead of the center console dash like how a BMW did. Nice soft touch armrest, nice and soft to the touch on the mid door panel. However hard plastic on the upper door panel but has a really nice graining to it. And let's go ahead and rev it up. Now build quality and materials inside of this car here, build quality is pretty average for the class. Um, materials are pretty good. You have nice soft touch materials right here and then also right here on the center console armrest is also nice and soft to the touch and stitched and on the armrest and the mid door panel. So in the most important places it is soft to the touch. Overall materials are pretty decent overall as well as build quality. Now one complaint I do have about the cruise is that the cabin space is a little bit confining in here and then if you are a taller driver you will find it to be a little bit more, more uncomfortable compared to rivals like the Volkswagen Jetta as well as the Toyota Corolla. They're definitely going to feel a little bit more roomier. And as far as the seats themselves, they're pretty nicely bolstered and they have a decent amount of padding to them. It's just that this cabin just feels like an actual compact car from like the early 2000s or the 90s. It's a little bit confining. However, I do like the classy two-tone light gray color going on here as well as the black. It does give it a more interesting and distinctive looking flavor inside of this cabin. Now as far as handling and the ride goes in the cruise, it combines responsive handling with a comfortable compliant ride. The sport suspension on the two LT, LTZ and diesel models is firmer but still provides a very agreeable ride. The turbocharged 1.4 liter gas engine we have here is pretty average in terms of outright acceleration but it's peppier around town than the 1.8 liter thanks to its increased torque. The automatic transmission it's paired to isn't as responsive however. Programmed for maximum fuel economy, it's reluctant to downshift for a quick acceleration and passing unless you really boot the gas pedal. 
However, the diesel model of the Cruze uses a different six-speed automatic, and I found that to be a little bit more responsive than the one we have here. Now, as far as visibility goes inside of this vehicle here, the A-pillar isn't too thick. There's lots of glass area all around, especially in the front. Outward visibility is also pretty good, too. And then coming to rearward visibility is also good. Lots of glass area back there. The C-pillar isn't also too thick as well. And there's no sloping roof line, so definitely does help a lot. Now coming down here, you have a 12-volt power outlet, two cup holders, your e-brake is also right here. And then you also do have your center console, which where you will find your USB port and your auxiliary input. Like I said, it's nice and soft to the touch and stitched. Now coming to the center stack controls here, I do have one ergonomic gripe is that when you put the shifter into park, it can get in the way if you're trying to reach some of the AC control knobs and buttons. But however, the center stack has been slightly refreshed and you have your different zones right here and then your different temperatures and then your fan speeds are right here too of course very simple and easy to use controls here what you would expect from a compact car your recycling's right there and your rear window defroster coming right th here they actually uh, changed out the switch from the now coming right here in the 2014 cruise this actually used to be the power door lock switch but they changed this to be the trunk release switch Coming up here, you also do have your OnStar with SOS Safety Connect and then your interior illumination lighting, of course. Now coming to the steering wheel designs, since we have the LT trim here, it's a pretty basic looking design and it's just a little dull. I think they could, you know, spruce up the steering wheel just a little bit. Um, maybe add a metallic trim that goes right here. I know on the higher end trims, it's definitely a lot nicer. But they've basically been using the steering wheel since the early 2010s, earlier this decade. But you do have your voice recognition, your Bluetooth, steering wheel mounted audio controls, cruise control buttons right over here too. So it's a very functional steering wheel. Now coming to Chevrolet's MyLink system, I like it for the most part. I love the graphics of it. I think that's the best part of the system as well as the responsiveness. However... The buttons are just a little tad small for my liking, especially when you're trying to go to this lower section right here. It is a little bit of a hassle sometimes, especially on a daily basis, but that's just one minor gripe I do have when it comes to the ergonomics. Now, coming to your media sources, AM, FM, XM, satellite radio, Pandora, internet radio, Stitcher, smart radio. You have to have your smartphone connected, of course. Coming to your phone, you have your hands-free calling, and then your optical disk drive, CD player, USB port, auxiliary input, Bluetooth streaming audio, as well as you can read messages right here too. Pretty interesting. But those all include your media sources except for your messages. And then right there you have your weather, but you have to have a subscription, movies, pretty neat. But as you can see, I'm trying to reach into this lower section right here, and it can get a little bit can be an annoyance sometimes, I have to say. Pictures right there, quick info, fuel prices. Let's go to quick info. Gives you your five-day five forecast, nearby fuel stations, and then your movie show times. And then here's your tune knob right here, and then your seek track button, play button, and pause. Presets are right here too. And then your equalizer settings are right here, if you just click on tone right here. Then you have your back button right here as well. And then you can change the time and date by clicking on clock. And then you have your quick info button right there. And then your favorites for your audio, your radio stations. Alright. Now coming to your gauges, the gauges do need a little bit of a refresh. They're pretty much carried over from the 2014 model year but your speedometer is right there and then your RPM gauge fuel gauge and then your oil temperature gauge yeah. now coming to the gauges they're pretty much carried over for the 2014 model year 
and they do definitely need a little bit of a refresh. I would love to see more advanced technology like a TFT display, but at least you do have a digital speedometer, and then you have your tripodometer too here, and then your compass. Pretty basic stuff right there. Now you also do have a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Decent range of adjustment, I have to say. Alrighty. And then right here is where you will also find your traction control off button. And let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Materials and build quality do follow through in the rear for the most part. Um, right here, it is hard to the touch on the armrest where in the front it was soft touch. Up here, hard to the touch, but at least on the mid-door panel, soft touch. Now sitting back here, this is where, compared to its competitors, it is lacking in rear seat passenger space. And it does feel a little bit confining back here, I have to say. You do have a rear armrest with cup holders at least. And a single map pocket. But this seat is all the way back here. And I can basically do that in a Jetta or a Corolla. And still have enough room to be comfortable. But in the cruise, if the seat's all the way back... I would definitely have to squish in and cram in a little bit. Alright. Now the rear seats also do fold down to maximize cargo room. Decent amount of cargo capacity. Full manual passenger seat. And your glove box. And nice and damp too. Alrighty. So with a very highly fuel efficient 1.4 liter 4 cylinder turbo, secure handling, a handsome and stylish interior design, and a big trunk, the 2015 Cruze doesn't dominate the small car class, but it's on equal footing with most competitors and is certainly worth a look if you're shopping for a fuel efficient compact sedan with solid credentials in most areas. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.